Every child is worthy of love, but the immoral exploitation of a child's development is not. Welcome to another episode of Counterthought. This episode might get me in trouble, I'm not sure, but the topic I want to discuss here is the immorality of transgender children, specifically the exploitation of the child by the parents themselves. The discussion around transgender children has been going on for, for years now. Search YouTube, you can go back at least three, four, five, six years and find small series or documentaries about you know the transition of a child going to as early as four years old. And when you watch these videos, what you are, if you listen closely, you hear them use terminology, the children and the parents themselves, to where it tips you off, where it should tip you off to say, hmm, a child in normal development, normal life, should not be learning the terms that they are using. And I'm of the belief that that is because these terms that they are learning, that they are using, starting at age four years old, five years old, six years old, is because they are exposed to that terminology through their parents. Earlier this week, or going into late last week, it was announced that the International Swimming Governing Body, F-I-N-A, FINA, I believe it's pronounced, came up with a new transgender swimming policy to keep biological males, transgender females, like Leah Thomas, out of their, their competitions. And that was applauded, right? The only little carve out is, hey, you can still participate if you are a biological male that has transitioned if you did so before you began puberty. And some like myself are like, okay, well, is that going to encourage, is that going to encourage people to transition earlier? And then the follow-up question is, well, if you transition that early and you don't go through puberty, then you're not going to have the same um, advantages like Aaliyah Thomas did, 6'4", over 200 pounds, you know, <clears throat> going through male puberty all the way through like 20 years old and everything with testosterone. So will anyone who transitions that early even actually have the advantage. So maybe, maybe this swimming decision is actually the first major governing body to actually take the first positive step in that direction to, to clearly stand up for women's sports. Talked about that in an earlier episode about, you know, transgender athletes and female athletics and still waiting on the NCAA to actually grow a pair. What they did is they just kicked the can down the road and then ultimately said, oh, hey, we'll just leave it up to your governing body. If your governing body has a policy, then then great. Then, you know, just abide by that. So that's all well and good. But that carve out for children, you know, people transitioning before they would turn 11, 12 years old gets to the bigger issue. One that I've been, I guess, kind of putting off to the side to discussing on this podcast for a long time. The bigger issue of why are we even talking about trans, transgender children? Like, why why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? I It's been a long, long time, right, that we've had adults, you know, transitioning and grown man decides he wants to be a woman and, and vice versa, right? That's been going on for a long, long time. But why are we even talking about transgender children at all. Like, why is that a thing? Why is that something that seems to become more and more accepted in our society? The people who, who, who support this movement, so to speak, think they are doing a moral good, but I believe it is immoral. Like this is not, not normal. Yes. Gender dysphoria is, is a thing. But if you look over over the years, over the decades, the number of people who, especially children who are identifying as transgender, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The math does not add up. There is no way the math adds up. You're seeing exponential spikes in people identifying as transgender, especially children. And what I believe is happening is that these, these children, they, they are being exploited by their parents. And I'll get into that a little bit more of how that's actually taking place here in a couple of minutes. But once these children are exploited and 
affirmed by their parents, right? The people that they look up to the most, they then can be ostracized by people they go to school with or, or church with, or, you know, practice or, or something like that for some extracurricular activity. And then what do they go searching for? They search for like-minded people, supportive people, you know, supportive people, just like their parents. And it creates this community for them. But this community just, just continues to build and grow and, and just pour into itself and, and it's getting out of control or it is already out of control. I should say it's like, it just, it just feeds and grows. It's, it's like its own living thing. But when you start looking at these statistics, and again, I mentioned that exponential rise and in, in growth of the number of children, you know, pre-adults, you know, 17 and younger that identify as transgender is just skyrocketed. It has skyrocketed. And when you go further into the statistics, you know, you hear all these reasons of, of why a child would do this or why a parent would allow their child to do this and why they would affirm these feelings in their children. And some of the reasons you hear is, oh, well, you know, they were, they were so distraught, they were so anxious and depressed, and we did not want them to, to commit suicide or anything like that, which, you know, no parent will want their children to do that, right? Their child to do that. So I understand that. And that's part of the problem, which I'll get to here in a second, kind of the whole process and how I believe this is working. But then you go further down the road and you hear all these stories about people who transitioned before, you know, they were even legally an adult at 18 years old and they regret it. And the rate of suicide is, is very high. So again, it's like this, it is this immoral short sightedness, immoral short sightedness that we see in a large swath of our society today. So this is what I think is happening. I mean, I'm just going to walk you through this. I'm going to read some, uh, some psychological uh, theories and child development and so on and so forth. So bear with me here for a couple of minutes, but this is what I think is happening. So a child is born right? A child is born either boy or girl, male or female. That's just, that's what it is, right? I don't, I don't care who you are watching that, like if you agree with that or not, but we're just, you know, we're going to follow the science and, and that is fact, boy or girl. And the child begins to develop, right? You know, going through the stages of development. And then once the child gets to about three years old, three years old, it enters into what Eric Erickson, a child psychological, you know, expert development. He has this to say for this age range from three to six years old. This is initiative versus guilt through make believe play. Children experiment with the kind of person they can become. Initiative says it is a sense of ambition and responsibility and that develops when parents support their child's new sense of purpose. However, the danger is that parents will demand too much self-control, which leads to over-control and creates guilt within the child. And then at six to 11 years old, Eric Erickson goes on and says at school, the children will develop the capacity to work and cooperate with others. That is like industry. And then inferiority develops when negative experiences at home, at school, or with peers leads to feelings of incompetence. And then from 12 years old through adolescence, this is identity versus role confusion. The adolescent tries to answer the questions, who am I? What is my place in society? And by exploring values and vocational goals, the young person forms a personal identity. And the negative outcome is role confusion 
about their future adult role. So here's what I think is happening. I was watching again these these small documentaries about children who have transitioned as young as four years old and Fox News ran this special about a five or ten minute special a week or so ago about a story of this child who, according to the parents, first signaled to the parents that they were not a girl or a boy, whichever. They were the opposite. So what I think is happening is, as Eric Erickson describes in the ages from three to six years old, it's these feelings of initiative versus guilt. And as these children, as I just read, are going through this sense of ambition and responsibility, and it develops as their parents supports the child's new sense of purpose, the parents, whether they are aware of it or not, are exploiting this stage of development in their child. And watching these little documentaries and everything, I you heard and I think every single one of them, the parents being like, oh yeah, it was a boy and you know he just really gravitated towards glitter and rhinestones and unicorns or you know pink and favorite color. And if it was a girl, you know the girl did not like to wear dresses or wear bows. And you could see like this as they determined to be anxiety, as they interpreted it to be anxiety or you know talked about that the child was depressed. And then once we made the change in their clothing and their interest in the toys that they played with, it was like night and day, you could just see how happy they were. And Eric Erickson said right there, child's new sense of purpose develops when the parents support their child. And the danger is that parents will demand too much, leads to over control and feelings of guilt. So as a child is going through this developmental stage, the parents, you know, see, oh my gosh, like, you know, they're not, they're not really fitting into this stereotype that's supposed to be for a boy or a girl. And it's creating this confusion. And, and then there's this, uh, you know, like just, just craziness within the house. And, you know, they don't seem right. The child doesn't seem balanced. And instead of dealing with that, instead of dealing with that, with how they should, you know, instead they think, okay, well, well, what can we do to, to please the child? What can we do to please the child? And boom, they begin to please the child and they find out, oh, well, little Johnny over here, little Johnny doesn't always want to play in the dirt and be outside or, or, you know, play with uh, GI Joe dolls or, you know, whatever, play with do Paw Patrol or something like that. You know, their favorite character is not Chase. Their favorite character is, is Sky or um, Everest or something like that. You know, so, so let's, let's feed, let's just, just dive into that let's build that even larger than it is already in as a way of importance in their life let's just continue to to push that and push that and push that and push that and the child as eric erickson said is there's stages of development they're like oh well this is great my parents are, are you know i like this my parents you know i see that they see that i like this and this is great so now i it is just continuing to to grow and you know, they're exploiting this stage of development instead of letting this stage of development, just trying to, to get through it. And instead of dealing with, you know, the lack of a better term, the negative or maybe the the dysfunction or, you know, what have you, the, the chaos of it. They just go and acquiesce to their child. And a child at that, that age cannot think abstractly. They're not developmentally there mentally. But these parents are just acquiescing to their, their three, four, five, six, seven, eight year old. Because in my opinion, they don't want to deal with the child in this whole situation, the, the way that they should, this developmental stage is the way that they should. And then let's say this doesn't occur within those, those first um, five or six years. And they move on to the next stage, which is again, industry versus inferiority. At school, the children develop the capacity to work and cooperate with others. And that sense of inferiority develops when negative experiences at home, school, or with peers and leads to feelings of incompetence. So if a child starts having these, you know, interests, let's say a boy interested in maybe some girl things, stereotypical girl things, right? Because these are the same parents who, you know, five years ago or maybe yesterday were getting on to you about, hey, how dare you, you know, 
stereotype a boy playing with this or a girl playing with that. Like a girl can do these things, right? Like we hear these, we heard these arguments all the time. Those arguments have been made while I was growing up, you know? Oh yeah. Well, well, girls don't have to play with dolls. You know, girls can play with this skateboards and go out and ride bikes, roll around in the dirt and all these things. And then at the same time, these same parents are like, Oh, well, you know, she didn't like bows or dresses. So we just, you know, we thought she wanted to be a boy and we just continued to, to push that and to push that and to push that and to push that. And she saw that that was good. And, and now we've affirmed this thing that he was just a, <laughs> a part of a child's development. It's ridiculous. So if they get in that six, 11 years old and they're having, you know, again, they cannot think abstractly. They're having, they're at school and, um, these feelings of inferiority at home, like these parents, again, they, they're acquiescing to the child. They don't want to deal with this stage of development the way that they should. They're just, yes, 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 probably, right? You know, they, they don't want to push back. They just want to do what the child wants to do to keep the child happy. From ages 6 to 11 years old, they don't want to create that sense of feeling of inferiority. And one way they're avoiding any that occurring is that they are just saying, Yes, 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 and creating that positive environment at home. So if the child is identifying with something that is stereotypical to the opposite of their biological sex, then it is just continuing to to grow and build and, and reaffirm those thoughts and those feelings. So to me, it is the parents that are at the heart of this exponential growth and rise of transgender children. And you hear these children say things like, um, you know, at four years old, the parents tell the stories and they walked out of their bedroom and said, I believe I'm transgender. Excuse me? What four-year-old growing up as any four-year-old should, a typical four-year-old should, would be exposed to the word transgender and the meaning of it? Where do they pick that up? They either picked it up from daycare, which, eh, not as likely as what? The parents. Why are the parents talking like this around the house? Do you not have a filter? Can you not turn off the TV, change the channel, adjust your conversation when your child is present? Maybe not stare face to face with your kid and say, oh, hey, yeah, did you know that there are boys? and girls and then there are boys who think they're girls and girls who think they're boys and we call them transgender yeah you could be that maybe maybe oh 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 johnny you you don't want to play with you don't want to play with uh the football you want to play over here with with uh barbie and and some unicorns or my little pony okay yeah 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 we'll we'll do that we'll do that fast forward right Oh, hey, hey parents, I'm, I'm transgender. Oh, congratulations. Yay, we're so happy for you. Because no one wants to speak up in these communities and say, like, hey, no, no. We're going to let the stage of development pass. We're going to deal with it the way that it should be dealt with. But we're not going to acquiesce to our child. And And one of the things you pick up in these media stories, because one of these documentaries I watched was a, a Sky News. I think the child was based either, I think it was in um, in England because it referenced uh, Tavistock. They love it. They love it. They love it. The media loves it when they can get a child who identifies as transgender, who has Christian parents. That is like the holy grail for this movement. Because then what does it say? They're trying to make this argument that, oh, you know, God meant for this to happen. Why, why would a Christian, why would a Christian husband and wife allow their child to, you know, or not allow, that's not the right term, but why, why would they, why would they support a their child being transgender if it wasn't in God's plan? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to sow that seed of doubt. Now, they don't tell you anything about the parents 
right? They don't. One of the documentaries I watched it said pastor and then the, the man's first name and last name. Okay, well, a pastor of what church? What denomination are you a pastor? Are you really a Christian? Are you just confused? Are you masquerading around? Like, what's the story here? What's what's the full story? They don't tell you that. No, 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 no. Because they want to sow that seed of doubt. And one of the other terminology, one of the other terms that I heard watching these documentaries is I am after they transitioned, after the child transitioned, you hear them say, I am now the way that I was meant to be. I am now the way that I was meant to be, which says what? It's trying to cast doubt that God's design when he formed you in your mother's womb, that you were born a boy, but God got it wrong. Or maybe God didn't get it wrong, but his plan was for you to transition into a girl or a girl into a boy. Do you see the devil at work here through this, the immorality of transgender children and do not buy into it. Do not buy into it. This rise in the transgender children is, is because I believe because of the parents, the parents are met with pushback, so to speak, some resistance in the development of their child resistance that maybe they're not prepared for. They're not used to, they don't want to deal with. And what do they do? They, they acquiesce to the child and then they end up exploiting, whether they know it or not, they're exploiting the child's development. And because of the exploitation, these children are ending up confused and identifying as a transgender child. And I mean, it doesn't just stop at, at this level. It is the official position, the policy of the Biden administration, the White House. They issued, I believe it was last month, maybe a month and a half ago, their policy of gender affirming care. Gender affirming care includes all the way up to surgeries for a transgender child. And there are policies also that say, hey, if you try to take your child to a psychologist or a psychiatrist to have them evaluate and understand and you know, just to talk about the feelings that they are feeling and the identity confusion that they have, you are not allowed to do that as a child. And if you are a psychologist or psychiatrist who takes part in any of, any of those and provides any type of care in that way, that you yourself would be penalized, fined, or arrested. This is official policy from the White House. Official policy of different states. That is crazy. So you see and you hear all this talk about transgender children, and it doesn't just start with the parents. It goes all the way up to the White House. This is official White House policy, which means it is an official now American policy. I believe it was just through an executive order. So hopefully the next president, Republican, right? Maybe DeSantis, wink, wink, will just wipe that out. But it goes all the way from Mary and John Doe to the president of the United States. That is how out of control this is. And I believe, once again, it starts with the parents. This rise in transgender children starts with the parents. And because it starts there through this affirmation, the children, because no one wants to push back, right? No one wants to say like, no, 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 no. You got this wrong. It's just affirmation after affirmation after affirmation. And that's a good feeling, right? When you get affirmed, you do something good, you get praised and everything. Why would anyone want that to end? So it just continues to feed and build and grow. And it is out of control. This immoral celebration and promotion of transgender children is way out of control. And you, myself included, like I'm doing now, need to speak out against it. And if you don't feel confident or comfortable to say anything, share, share this episode with someone or just share it, you know, share it maybe one-to-one -to, -one to somebody else. 
share it through a social media account, do something. Do something to find more of us who, in this like-minded sense, to push back against this narrative that it's okay for a child to be transgender. A child does not have abstract thoughts until they begin about 11 or 12 years old. So they might be able to say these, this term, the terminology and everything that, uh, the transgender terminology, but they don't even fully understand what that means. They don't, they don't. The parents, whether they know it or not, they are, in my opinion, at the root, at the center, at the core of the growth of transgender children. Some say this is child abuse, that what they're doing to their own kids and then what others who have transitioned, who are adults are, you know, affirming and, and everything that they're confirming these thoughts and these feelings that that is another form of child abuse. You know, these groomers, you've heard that term too, but this has spun way out of control. There's a difference between an actual psychological issue and the exploitation of a child's development. Again, every child deserves to be loved. So if you are like me and agree with what I am saying and are against this transgender child phenomena, this movement, this, this culture, this immoral culture, show love to these people but also speak truth. Hi, I'm Brian Kletter, the creator and host of the Counterthought Podcast. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to like it and then also check out these two videos and subscribe to the channel. For more daily content from me, you can find me on Instagram at Counterthought CEO and the official Counterthought Instagram page at counter underscore thought. Thank you for watching and spread the word.